anything is even the least bad, I will lick it first because I don't want to ruin my whole dish. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is taking the things like that and she's asking like, is it good to go ahead and maybe pulse those in the food processor? We were talking about making up dips, sauces, dressings, soups ahead of time putting those in the freezer. Let's just say, for example, she's not getting home till seven at night, okay, or eight at night. Okay, she's still got to eat. It's not optimum, but still working with what you're working with, right? Because right now, that's what she's working with. So she's good all day on her smoothies and she's got her plan and all this, but sometimes by the time she gets home, she almost systematically under eats because she doesn't have time to prepare. She's just like, fruit it. Like, I'm just going to bed or whatever. And we know, somebody else does that too. Who is it? It's, it's, um, who else does that? You, Shalisa, it's you, girl. And so, y'all know what I'm saying. But what happens is a lot of times when we systematically under eat, our body is going to get in this mode and eventually you're going to fall off in a bad way. You're going to binge or something's going to happen. Even if you go to just vegan junk food, it's not your dang plan, right? So here's a thing you can do. I do this a lot of times when I buy pumpkins in the fall because if I buy a pumpkin, then I'm going to get it on sale, okay? Because people are carving those. Well, I'm going to carve it into a whole bunch of meals. So I'm going to peel it with my Titan peeler because that thing will take the skin off pumpkins. And then I'm even going to use my julienne peeler run down for noodles or I'm going to chunk it and I'm going to blend it up into soups or sauces, okay? And I'm going to freeze it. And that way, for weeks or even a month coming up, I have that ready to go and it really works great for my budget. Also, like best raw vegan spaghetti sauce ever, that's just a good example of a really good go-to recipe that when you're really hungry, that's going to be satisfying. So what you could do is you can make that up, like let's say it's Sunday today, and you are going to make that up, and you're going to put it in the proportions you want. You're going to put it in baggies, or maybe you're going to put one portion in the fridge for tomorrow, and you're going to put maybe two other portions for this week, and you're going to put them in the freezer. Because most people, they don't mind eating the same thing. Like, especially most people that are single or you're just preparing for yourself, um, you're pretty happy just to have two or three different things. And frankly, most people eating a standard diet are eating like one night's pizza night and one night's, I don't know, whatever you're eating, steak and potatoes. But they're not having a wide variety. It's basically chicken and whatever, you know, so or, or one night's noodles or whatever. So preparing those ahead and then that morning popping the freezer bag into the fridge then when you get home even if you need to whiz it around to warm it up just a tad in your blender there you go because it's real easy to just chop or dice or whatever your veggies if you've got your sauce and everything because it's a no-brainer you know you've already gone through the thought process of what you needed to have in that soup sauce or dressing do y'all are y'all picking up what I'm laying down <laughs> A tanny food prep class. Girl, you get it every day on YouTube. <sighs> Y'all know how I do it. it look, it's a, it's all I've got. You know, it's it's like all I do. Okay, so let me say something else. Oh, yeah. The Ethiopian um, tahini is really good, and you can get that on ShirleyBarLiving.net, I think it is, or .com. What else did I want to tell you? Um, here's something else. Who was talking to me about a green smoothie cleanse following up this? I can't remember who it was. Um, but here's the thing. A great thing to follow this up would be my 21-day green smoothie cleanse. But even if you did it for a week, it's over there on my playlist. And it's basically just like taking the, cal uh -oh, the calories you're eating, okay? So go by that splitting it up into really like four green smoothies because your your third eating time of the day, your snack, you would blend. You see what I mean? It's a great way to give your body even a little more cleansing and, and just a resting effect because it's just easier on the digestion, you know? And then after that, what's brilliant about that is after that few days of a green smoothie cleanse, you could go back into eating like you are now and all of a sudden you feel like you've got this plethora of food again. Just like when I did um, the few days of the celery juice and Vimergy, 
or in the past when I've done like um, a colon cleanse, I come off that thinking, oh my gosh, like I have every choice in the universe with this foods I eat, you know, which is kind of great. So I want to tell you that. Um, let me tell you this right quick. We're going down the road, and did y'all hear on my video the other day, somebody was talking about coming down here to the south, and some of y'all that live here know what I'm talking about. There's nothing but fast foods. You've got like Fats Cafe, and you've got an actual chicken up there saying, come on in um, and try me out in a new whatever. We've got a serious disconnect. I mean, like, you're actually seeing the chicken talking. People aren't, which is not the point, but you've got fast food. You've got everywhere you go, you are bombarded with sales pitches for food. It's every place. But yet, then again, little baby and I at Whole Foods yesterday, did you see him eat the two bananas like that? He was hungry. And uh, really, it was kind of a snack time. But we went over and we looked at the bar and all that, and... um and see, they had macaroni over there, and it's not vegan, macaroni and cheese, and Carly doesn't feed him that. And he's like, oh, Roni, and I said, that's not mommy's Roni. And, um, and then the sweet potatoes, I looked at what was in those, and it was a lot of sugar and different stuff, and I didn't want him to eat that. So we just had the bananas, and I had, and did you see how simplistic, at least satisfying that was? And I was just thinking about that as we sat there, like all the choices in this world, and at the end of the day, we have the choice, you know. But um, all these all these signs we're seeing, all these different things. I have a friend of mine. That, um, it's the guy that Carly is renting the apartment from. His name's Harvey. And he's like, well, I ate it. Uh, I had pizza at Whole Foods today. That's healthy, right? And I'm thinking, are you for real? Like, no. It's really not. It, it's very little difference than eating it anywhere else, right? I mean, it still was the, the white crust. That's no nutrients. It's still laden with oil and cheese and, and salt and meat and everything else that's killing people. You know, that's trickery right there. Or I was over in the, um, I was telling you I saw that apple pie over there. Okay, it was vegan. That is great, and I'm not, I'm not knocking that. I mean, that's awesome. But at the same time, are we getting the health gains we want? No, we're really not. If you're eating a whole apple pie like that every day, good luck on that, right? So anyway, um, all these things that are coming at us, do we realize it's a demon? Do we realize it's the demon killer? Like, um, refined processed food, okay? sugars, processed sugars, processed starches are, are not much better, okay? We're talking about no nutrient pasta, we're talking about all those things, white bread, e even most breads are nutritionally void. The whiter the bread, the sooner you're dead, right? Um, all these things, and we're not even just talking about fast food, but listen to this. The statistic right now is you make it to 89 years old and we're all like oh people are living longer at what cost like what kind of quality of life are they having if you make it to 89 years old almost 60 percent of the people are having dementia which means they're losing their mind they're getting alzheimer's they don't know people the quality of life is terrible um 33%, these are world statistics too, which tells you that like in America, for example, where so many more people are overweight, because you're talking about also like in Africa where nobody is, it's just percentages, right, of the world. 33% are overweight, and in addition to that, 33% are morbidly obese. That means the weight's going to, the weight and the disease that comes from that's going to kill them. The 66% of people with a weight problem, that's right now. By 2025, going at the same rate, 50% of this whole population, this is just the people that are going to be morbidly obese, not in addition to um, overweight. 50% are going to be morbidly obese. 
and we're going to still play into the toxic crap everybody's eating every day? Not me. Um, poor food choices are catching up with people. Look at the world. People are living on chemicals. Let's just, let's just sum it up to say, we know we've all seen how the Twinkie can survive without decomposing or changing its chemical makeup for however many years that study was, like 20 or 30 years. But this is what people are eating. It's chemicals, you know? It's chemicals. It's not food. It's not nutrients. This is what people are living on. And um, Cheryl Lynn was talking about that she's very successful at things, not just this, but anything, when she becomes slightly obsessed with it. And you know what? That makes you think, oh, that's strict and all that, or oh, that's, no, no, it's total freedom. Because when you can be focused, you can get results. Think about that too, and I, I, I don't know if I talked about on this on a video or to y'all, but um, think about that if you're in a new relationship and you're kind of obsessed with this situation, you're giving it your all and it's pretty successful, right? Till you lose focus. Anything's like that. Be focused long enough until these new patterns become your rituals. They become your habits, and that's the bottom line of it. And then it becomes who you are. And you can go anywhere and do anything. You can go there as you. While you're there, you're you. And when you leave, you're you. With the integrity of what you want for yourself intact. You know? Um. Hey, hey. Here we are today just setting up boundaries for our own life, you know. I was just thinking to myself how, really, you have to know what, what you are in this world. You have to know what you stand for, or I don't know, you could fall for anything. And you know, the thing is like, really, I would love to cultivate a, a kind of relationship where there was caring and nurturing and, and, and love, and, and not just like a fling type of thing, you know. And sometimes you just have to say, you know what, dude, I'm not that kind of granny, okay? You understand? <laughs> I am not that kind of granny! 